We are 18 days away from the trade deadline. Let's see who you're targeting for the Mariners coming up here on Fan Fiction Friday. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Friday, July 12th, 2024. This is Tony Gonzalez and Colby Patton out for the Locked On Mariners podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Fan Fiction Friday, the show where you submit your Mariners trade ideas and Colby and I react to them. Before we get into this week's batch, shout out to our title sponsor today, Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals. Check out Booking.com for your stay today. And if you want to hear from me and Colby even more and help support the show, check out our Patreon. The link is in the description and you can sign up for a free seven day trial. And we're going to kick things off here on Fan Fiction Friday with a trade from Zach, who has a prospect for prospect deal, a one for one between the Mariners and the Cubs, Cole Young for Owen Casey. Colby, what do you think? It's a no from me. Uh, I do like that it is a prospect for prospect trade. That's not something that we've talked really at all about. Um, it seems unlikely to do be something that Jerry would do uh, this summer. Uh, but, you know, you have to consider everything. Jerry's a creative guy, uh, and so he's going to do uh, whatever he can to try and improve, you know, this club. And if that means three-team deals, that means a prospect for prospect swap, then, you know, maybe he might do it. But, uh, the problem with Casey in particular is that he swings and misses a ton. He struck out 31% of the time last year uh, in double A. And this year, I think it's 27% in triple A. Uh, now, he's only, he just turned 22 like a week ago. So there's still plenty of time for him to be a good big leaguer and to figure things out. But you're talking about, you know, Casey can immediately play for for Class A and, and Canzone. Are you sure about that? Because typically strikeout rates don't go down. Uh, when you get to the big leagues, they tend to go up. And again, he's just barely turned 22 years old. Uh, he's a fun prospect. There's certainly power there, but uh, there are some questions about his contact rate. He's really struggled against breaking balls. And uh, there's also some questions about how good he's going to be defensively uh, from, you know, the opinion ranges from average to well below average. And so, uh, you know, it, it Casey's a fun prospect, but he doesn't help you this year. Like it's impossible to count on him. Look at that and say, that guy's going to help us this year. So I'm training Cole young. It's going to be for somebody who absolutely is going to help me this year and probably next year and probably the year after. Right. So, um, you know, to me, I, I like the outside the box thinking here, Casey's not that guy. He's not that guy who's going to, uh, you know, I'm going to feel really good about him stepping in and, and being a huge acquisition because remember, if you trade Cole young for an unproven player, you don't have Cole Young to trade for a proven player, which means if you want the proven player and potentially that impact bat, now I have to also trade Harry Ford, or now I also have to trade Laz, or I also have to trade Emerson now. Uh, so like, if I'm trading Cole Young, it's going to be for somebody I'm really confident is going to help me at the big league level this year, and that means major league track record uh, yeah. for me. So, uh, no. Yeah, I totally agree with everything that you said. I, I like the idea, but Casey, uh, like you said, is someone that I just can't depend on for for anything this year. I can't confidently acquire him and go, yeah, that solves one of the issues I have on my big league roster right now. Um, this is this is more of a winter trade than it is a summer yeah. trade. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little challenge. I, I, I think it's a really solid idea. Uh, but yeah, Casey still has some things I think he needs to work on. I mean, he struck out 31% of the time in double A last year, and he's striking out 28% of the time essentially in triple A. Uh, just 279, 387, 443. And uh, that's a 117 WRC plus down in triple A. Like, right. He probably needs some more time to, to grow. Plus, there's kind of a decent chance that Cole Young, just calling up Cole Young, would help you more than acquiring Casey would uh, mm. this year anyways. So, yeah, yeah I, just, I, th I think if you're doing a prospect for prospect swap uh, this month, it's probably to go out and get a high end pitcher that, you know, the White Sox, for example, would want for Luis Robert because you don't really have that guy. Like maybe Logan right. Evans is that guy in their eyes. But, you know, if you're trying to compete with like the Dodgers and the Phillies for, for Luis Robert, you might have to go out and get like that headliner type of pitching prospect 
Uh, and that might take, you know, flipping Cole Young or Harry Ford for for that guy. Uh, right. But this type of deal, again, this like obviously Casey is a much better prospect than Dom Canzone was. Uh, but it's it feels like it's in a similar vein to that idea last year. And I, I just uh, considering the position that you're in right now and all the things that you need to address on your roster, specifically in your position player group, I just don't think you can justify that. So uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a 50 for the idea. And I think if this was the winner instead of the trade deadline, it would make a lot more sense. Uh, but yeah, considering the context of everything, I, I, I wouldn't want the Mariners to do this, but I'll give you a 50 for sure. I'll give you a 45. I just think you've identified the wrong player. Uh, I don't think Casey's going to be much of a fit in Seattle. Uh, certainly not a better fit than than Cole Young. And because Casey isn't even you know, more likely to help you this year than Cole Young, even the guy you're giving up, it just kind of defeats the purpose of the whole trade. But I do like the, uh, the creativity behind it. And uh, again, this winter, this would be a very interesting type of trade to see the Mariners try and make. But this summer, you kind of need production. Uh, so yeah, I'm cool idea. It just, it's bad timing. Xander has a deal here with the giants, Tyler Locklear, Dom Canzone and Ben Williamson for Lamont Wade and Michael Conforto. Kind of depends on how much the giants value Lamont Wade and how much they think this is real. Uh, now in a down market, do they think they could get more for Wade if they just traded him by himself? Maybe. Yeah, it, it's certainly possible. Uh, but I think Locklear is the appropriate, uh, like idea for, for Lamont Wade. Uh, and if the giants want more than that, then I'm just out. Like it, I'm, I'm not paying for a 450 on base percentage guy because Lamont Wade has never been that. Uh, and he's not going to be that for the rest of this year. But if you're the giants, you're probably going like, well, then I guess you don't want Lamont Wade. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do like the Conforto That's how I idea. Feel. I honestly, I, if I were the Giants, I would take this deal because I think you're selling massively high on Lamont Wade and Conforto. He's not coming back. You know, you can save some money. No, and you get a you get a shot at uh, at Canzone and Canzone and Locklear are going to be on your your major league roster. You know, for the rest of this year too, if you make a deal like this. So it's not like you have to tell your fans to dream on these guys. Uh, you know, coming up in three years. Uh, you get a lot of club control out of this deal. So I actually think this might be a slight overpay from a Mariners perspective, but I think the giants would probably look at this and be like, well, you're not giving us like Lamont Wade. He's worth, you know, Felman Celestin. And it's like, okay, well we have nothing. To I, 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 I think especially in this market, that's how they're going to value him. Right. So I'm not a, I'm not a huge Lamont Wade. Like, like Wade's not high on my list because I just don't trust that the Giants are going to be reasonable uh, with his ask. Conforto is a guy that I would have a lot of interest in. Uh, lefty, uh, the bat fits pretty well here at T-Mobile. He's a Northwest guy. He's only a two-month rental, uh, and he's making some money. So his cost is actually probably going to be, yeah. I mean, Ben Williamson might be an overpay for a couple months yeah. of Conforto, but it's one I might take. So, uh, yeah, Conforto is basically right now who you're hoping Dom Canzone will be. Uh, and you know, you kind of need the guy now versus who you think a guy could be a couple years yeah. down the line. So, uh, yeah. I like Conforto quite a bit. I like Wade in a vacuum, but when you factor in what I think the Giants are going to ask for Wade, I, I, I feel like it's a very difficult trade to kind of uh, assess because, like, in a vacuum, I feel like this is a Mariners overpay when I kind of try and factor in the Giants and their kind of irrationality that they're a contender somehow still. Uh, and they kind of refuse to rebuild, then it's just kind of like, man, they're gonna, what are they going to want for Wade? They're going to want like, you know, Cole right. Young for Lamont well, Wade, and that's just not happening. Well, and and also in a season where you know quality bats are going to be very limited, and in a season where offense is down league wide, you got a hitter here who's slashing 316, 450, 424. That's a 158 WRC plus, who's controlled beyond this year doesn't matter if he's done it before or anything close like this before and doesn't matter if you think that's sustainable or not like they're going to put a pretty high price tag on that and i think it's going to be well beyond this kind of package from the mirrors i'm not willing to pay for lamont wade's career two months not happening so Uh, at that point i'm out so I'd, i'd go 40 on this probably go 45 but again like i really think the giants are going to be like give us cole young and you're going to be like (laughs) no yeah yeah don't call me again 
So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, really like the Conforto idea. I like Wade again in a vacuum, but I think yeah. if you factor in the Giants and kind of the let's be nice and say idiotic way. They've kind of run their ball club for the last three or four years, trying to chase that 2021 team again. Uh, you know, they refuse to hit the reset button, even though they desperately need to. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I don't really want to deal with the Giants at all, honestly. All right, we are going to look at more of your trades here in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Marys podcast is once again brought to you by Booking.com as well as eBay Motors. With summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you've always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yes, I'm talking about your rival cities. With hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay, even in your baseball rival city. Even a Mariners fan can have a great time down in Houston, whether you're watching Cal Raleigh hit one into the Crawford boxes or chowing down on some authentic Texas barbecue. Maybe you're doing both at the same time. From hotels that look over stadiums to family-friendly resorts, Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travel this MLB season. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. Book today on Booking.com on the site or the Booking.com app. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into an MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Again, that is ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. You can catch game two and the rest of this Mariners Angels series on the Mariners hometown broadcast with Sirius XM via the SXM app. All you have to do to find that is search the word Mariners. Let's get back into your trades here on Fan Fiction Friday. The great Corn Julio has a deal with the Tampa Bay Rays, Pete Fairbanks, and Jose Caballero to the Mariners for Ryan Bliss, Cade Marlowe, and Brody Hopkins. What do you think, Colby? I mean, Bliss is pretty much Caballero. So. I mean, Ca- I guess Cabby's, fine, whatever. Cabby's better defensively. Mm, I mean, he could play shortstop and yeah. Bliss probably shouldn't. Like, yeah. Bliss could do it if he needed him to, but like, you know, he, Bliss is pretty much second base only. Um, but yeah, and then like Marlo to me, like he's a throw in in this deal. I, I don't think the yeah. Rays are going to be interested in a guy like Marlo uh, at all. Hopkins is a really interesting. No, he's going to take up a 40 man spot too. Yeah. And we know how much they go through the 40 man crutch. Like he's probably a guy that ends up getting DFA'd in the winter. So uh, they just kind of refuse to even got to give Jonathan Clausen and his 17 WRC plus another shot. Why wouldn't we? Uh, no, I mean, the, I mean the Rays though. Like, yeah, he's probably right. a guy that, that they would DFA in the winter. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Brody Hopkins is really interesting. I could see the Rays being, like, enamored with Brody Hopkins. Uh, so I think he would carry a little bit of weight here. But I think from a Rays perspective, like, are they that desperate to get rid of Fairbanks' contract? Because you get Fairbanks for the rest of this year, 2025, and you have a team option for 2026 at a pretty reasonable price. And Fairbanks is a good reliever. Uh, not an elite reliever, yeah. but he's pretty darn good. Uh, and Caballero, whatever, he's a bench guy, right? I know the Rays are playing him every day. Clearly, that's a mistake. Uh, he got off to a hot start. He's really suffered. He could still steal some bags, though, draw some walks. We know the energy he brings uh, and all that stuff. So uh, for me, this feels like it's too light from the Mariner side of things to push a deal across. Uh, but I do think that the Rays are going to be quite interested in Brody Hopkins if the Mariners do come calling. Uh, so I, I do like that, that inclusion, uh, in this deal because I, it, it does feel like Hopkins is kind of a a Tampa Bay Ray type of guy. 
Yeah, so like this deal essentially is the the Rays get to reset their timeline on the the Caballero roll with with Bliss by what a year, right? An extra year of club control. Uh, Marlowe again, I, I think is just someone they end up DFAing in the winter, so I don't think he has really any any interest from from Tampa on that front. And then Bertie Hopkins is very interesting, and I just don't think that he's he's enough to kind of drive this steal because it's Bliss isn't driving the steal, Marlowe's not driving the steal. It's it's Hopkins, and I just I don't think that's enough for Fairbanks. Uh, one name I throw out there for you though, if you're looking for kind of like this young MLB for young MLB swap. Ryan Bliss for Austin Shenton. We know the Mariners circle back. Hey, that's not just me because I love Austin Shenton. We know that the Mariners tried to get Shenton last summer. Yep. First base, third base. They still have a hole in their corner infield they could try to fill. Shenton's been in the big leagues. It hasn't gone particularly well, but, you know, I, I feel like you have, you need, and Bliss isn't even playing right now. It's, it's incredibly frustrating that Bliss isn't playing right now, but, right. you know, it, I, I just think that this is a little light. Uh, for Fairbanks, Caballero to me, like Bliss and Caballero, pretty much a wash. You could say Cabby's better because he's got a little more track record. That's fine, but to me, they're pretty much the same guy, same idea. So whatever on that one. And then it really comes down to Hopkins for Fairbanks. Feels light, although I do think the Rays do like Fairbanks, uh, or the Rays do like Hopkins a little bit. But uh, yeah, I just think this is not going to be enough to get the deal done. So I'll say a forty. Yeah, I'll go 35 on this one. Caden has a deal here with the Marlins, and it is just Harry Ford for Jazz Chisholm straight up. To me, Jazz feels like a guy like I'd like to do some bulk for Jazz. And I mean, it's still good prospects. It's still like Ty Pete is like the headliner. Yeah. But like instead of Harry Ford straight up, it's it's Pete and it's, you know, Williamson and it's jeter martinez and you know what i mean like it's just a little more bulk than uh just a straight up one for one but if you're looking for what i think jazz probably cost i think ford's pretty much on the nose i I think if the marlins are just like hey we just want the best player we can get we don't care about the package we want the best prospect we can possibly get for jazz harry ford's probably the max i would pay like i don't think i would pay cole young for harry ford like you that's how, jazz. yeah, yeah. I don't think I would pay Cole Young for for Jazz. So that's like, mm. that's how thin the margin is here with just going forward for for Jazz straight up. It's like, I think I'd probably do that. I probably wouldn't do Cole Young. Yeah. So it's like I like, and this is interesting too because I have Ford ahead of like Montez in my in my yeah. ranks, but I wouldn't do Montez for Jazz straight up. Mm. Mm. So it's just kind of a, this weird. Jazz is such a weird player. Uh, that the, the package has to be right, uh, and I think it's a very Ford, nuanced discussion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Ford straight up for him is about as as much as I'm willing to pay. Uh, like that's as that's as far as I'm willing to go. So I, I think for that I got to give it a fifty. Just kind of splits right down the middle. I'll go yeah I'll go fifty maybe fifty five because I, I think it doesn't take much more than this to get Jazz or at least it shouldn't in theory. No. We have a couple more trades to get into here in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Tax Network USA and Stitch Fix. Here on Locked On Mariners, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team, whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the playoffs. It's year-round. You know what else is year-round? collection season just because tax season is over doesn't mean the irs will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes the irs can garnish your wages levy your bank accounts and even seize your property don't let the irs target you let the licensed professionals and tax experts at tax network usa go to bat for you with over 14 years of experience and an a plus rating by the better business bureau tax network usa has saved their clients over 1 billion dollars in tax debt whether you owe taxes have complicated matters that require tax planning or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing call 1-800-549-1000 that's 1-800 Five four nine one thousand, or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. See the link in this episode description. You know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good? 
That is what I get with Stitch Fix. Easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that will work for you. I just give my stylist my size, style, and budget preferences. Then I order boxes when I want and how I want. No subscription required. And they send five just for me pieces plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice. I keep what works and send back the rest. And if you don't love something, just send it back. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Now is the best time to get started at stitchfix.com slash MLB and get $100 off. That's $25 off your first four fixes for a limited time only. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $100 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB must redeem within seven days of sign up. Offer does not include kids fixes. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Once again, you can catch the M's and the Angels this weekend on the Mariners hometown broadcast of Sirius XM via the SXM app. All you have to do to find that is search the word Mariners. Last couple trades here on Fan Fiction Friday. We are going to look at Matthew's deal here now. It's a deal with the Cardinals, Jordan Walker and Steven Matz to the Mariners for Luis Arias, Trent Thornton and Ty Pete. It's kind of a weird one. Yeah. Uh, the Cardinals right now, as things sit, they are in the playoffs. Uh, they are one of the wild card teams. Uh, so I, to me, like, I don't think that the Cardinals are going to be all that interested in, in tr- selling low on Jordan Walker. And they're particularly not going to do it for Trent Thornton. Right. Like that, that's just, I mean, a year and a half of a middle reliever for, five years of like a former top hitting prospect who, by the way, in his rookie year was actually not too bad. Uh, He hit 276, 342, 445 as a 21 year old in the show last year. Uh, This year it's 155, 239, 259. And he's even struggled at AAA hitting just 251, 316, 388. Um, So it's been a, a struggle for Walker this year, but he was actually pretty solid last year in 465 plate appearances at the big league level, they are not going to give up on that guy. They're not going to sell low. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they're not going to sell low and trading him for a middle reliever. That's just not going to work. And Ty Pete, I don't think he does anything uh, for the Cardinals. They're kind of trying to win. Now Pete's a couple years away. They have Mason win. So they probably feel really good about where they're at in the shortstop. So unless they think Pete is like a top prospect, probably not going to happen. Jordan Walker might be the guy that you trade, you know, Harry Ford and, and something for yeah. and that might be the prospect swap, but this but deal, also, like the Cardinals th- aren't going to do this, but also like, why would the mayor or why should the Maris do that? This right now, this summer, like why, why should they, like, this feels like something that would be better suited for the winner because why should I think that Jordan Walker can help me right now? Right. Um, I mean, if it's only going to cost me Thornton, and Pete, I'm willing to get take that shot. Because I mean, I think yeah, Walker's gonna hit, but yeah, but like that's obviously not it's actually, gonna cost more than that. But yeah, that's not going to happen. Like, let's live in the world of reality here. Like, why would I want to target Jordan Walker right now at this very moment? Like, he, yeah. you know, he posted, uh, you know, he was pretty good last year, like you said, but he's posted a, a 44 WRC plus before getting sent down to AAA this year. Like, right. I don't know what Matt's uh, injury thing is either, uh, but he has signed through 2025 and he's on the 60 day IL right now. Yeah. So you're basically attempting to use Steven Matt's to drop Jordan Walker's value so low that you get him for free. I mean, really is what, is what this is. And the Cardinals aren't going to do that. They're, they're much smarter than that. They're, they're a well-run organization for the most part. Uh, they're not going to sell low on Walker and they're certainly not going to sell low by attaching a bad contract on top of it to drive his value down even further. So yeah. uh, Walker's just not going to be available uh, this summer and maybe this winter, but even this winter, if you went to him, they're probably going to be like Brian Wu, Bryce Miller. Yeah. Yeah. And do you really want to do that for Jordan Walker? Maybe, maybe this winter you're open to it, but yeah. right now Walker doesn't help you. Matt's doesn't help you. Uh, and the Cardinals aren't giving away five years of a guy who, you know, was a really good 21 year old major leaguer for a middle relief type and, and a lottery ticket prospect. Not going to happen. Yeah. I'll go 30 on this one. Yeah. I think that's about right. 
All right, last deal here from Daisy in the Dingo. It is a three-team deal with the Orioles and the Cubs. The Mariners get Heston Kierstad. The Orioles get Mark Leiter Jr. and Javier Assad. And the Cubs get Harry Ford and Michael Morales. Uh, seems a little light uh, for the Orioles, but uh, I don't know a ton about Assad and Leiter's club control. Um, and obviously the the Orioles have a you know, wealth of position prospects slash young major leaguers. And so Kierstad is probably available to some degree. And, and, you know, I think they probably want him to be available in like a Luis Robert type of trade. Uh, but uh, they do need, a, they do need some bullpen help in, in Baltimore. They could use some starting pitching help as well uh, mm-hmm. in the back end of that rotation. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, would they be willing to trade Kierstad for, you know, a, a couple of uh, solid arms? Maybe kind of depends on the club control, but it feels like it's a bit heavy uh, for for uh, Kierstad. But uh, you know, maybe not uh, from a Seattle Mariners perspective. Like, Harry so real Ford. quick, real quick on the on the club control, Assad has four more years after this year. And how, uh, how's he looking this year? So he has a forearm injury, but he's supposed to be activated um, before the All Star break. So seems like he's about to return. And he's been fine this year. Uh, he's probably like a low end four, high end five when it's all said and done. Three oh four right. ERA, four four one seven FIP. You know he doesn't strike too many guys out. Like it's an eight five seven case per nine this year. It's a career seven nine four case per nine overall. You know three five eight walks per nine this year. Like that to me sounds like a back end of the rotation type yeah. of arm. But there's still a lot of value in that especially for you know four more years of that um yeah i don't know it's kind of a weird weird deal and then lighter i'll look up lighters uh, i'm pretty sure lighter hit the il uh as well but uh yeah 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 he did uh i don't know if he's back yet uh he is yeah he just returned three days ago he also had a forearm injury which is a right. little scary. Uh, he is club controlled through 2026. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think for me, Kierstad, never been a huge Kierstad guy. I always felt he was a little bit overrated. To me, there's some real DH only risk here, um, which is a bit concerning. And then, uh, you know, also strikeout rate is kind of, something to be a little concerned about last year, cup of coffee in the big leagues, only 13 games, 30% strikeout rate started the year in, in triple a this year, 26%. Now he's come back. He's sitting a little bit right now and only, you know, 56 plate appearances at the big league level, but a 30% yeah. strikeout rate. So yeah. there's swing and miss here. Uh, there's a lot of raw power, uh, but his career high in home runs uh, is 21, like in a C, 20, sorry, 23. If you count the major leagues in a season last year, Eh, you know, yeah. if you're a DH only and you're only going to hit 25 homers and you're going to strike out 30% of the time, call me crazy. I don't think him hitting 313 right now is, is sustainable with that profile. Sure, and sure. I mean, his bat up right now is 429. So yeah, I don't love Kierstad uh, as a prospect, never really have, but six years of him for, you know, on your end will cost you Harry Ford and Michael Morales. Wouldn't hate it. Uh, I would just, again, if I'm trading Ford, if I'm trading young, I kind of want somebody who's like a proven producer in the major leagues uh, to trade Mm -hmm. one of those guys. And and Kierstad, I just don't trust him. Like the trade earlier we talked about earlier. Do I trust that guy to perform right, right away? Do I trust Casey to perform right away in the big leagues? No. Do I trust Kierstad more than Casey? Sure, because he, he's at least been at the major league level and produced at least a little bit at the major league level. Right, right, and in the high minors and like again, yeah, yeah, twenty five, not twenty two. Uh, but the answer is still no. Like again, if I'm trading Harry Ford, if I'm trading Cole Young, it's like I want a guy who's got at least a couple years of in the big leagues that are like, yep, like proof of concept here. Instead of hoping Kierstad just comes to Seattle and magically hits here. Yeah. Uh, so interesting I... deal. I like it. I like the idea. I think it makes a, a lot of sense on all three fronts, really. Um, mm-hmm. 
I might give you a 60 on this. Go 55. I still feel like Baltimore is going to want more. They're going to move Kierstad, but, you know, they get a starter, a back-end starter that they need. They get a, kind of a mid-high leverage reliever that they need, yeah. uh, you know, and, and so maybe they, they might be willing to do this. My guess is, is that the Mariners probably have to throw a little something to Baltimore uh, as well as the, the pieces they're giving to Chicago uh, to get them to move Kierstad and <sighs> Like if if Kiersad was the third bat that they brought in at this deadline, I'd be really happy about that. If he was yeah. the second bat, and it cost him Harry Ford to bring that guy in, like it's a risk. It it, it might work, but I, ugh, I like if I'm giving up a top prospect, I really want somebody who has. I mean, if you're trading Harry Ford for essentially your third bat, that means you've you've spent a lot at the deadline, right? And I mean, obviously, you know, we might say Kiersad's the third bat but they get Robert and, and Jazz Chisholm and somebody's like, oh, Kierstad's better than Chisholm. It's like, mm, okay, maybe. Like, so mm-hmm. it's all subjective. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, this is really interesting. It's very creative. Uh, three team deals always get a little bit of a leeway uh, from us as well, just because they're, they're very so hard. hard. Yeah, yeah, they're so hard to put together. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, uh, 55, 60, I think. Uh, really good, really good idea. Um, you know, outside the box thinking. And I feel like we had a lot of outside the box thinking. Uh, today. Yeah. Maybe not yeah. the best valuations, but some names we hadn't heard before. Yep. Um, and so I, I do appreciate that. And, and quick side note here, because I saw you guys in, in the Fan Fiction Friday thread, the Tigers are not trading Riley Green. Stop it. Just stop it. I, I want to I issue a challenge for next week's Fan Fiction Friday. I mentioned this earlier. Getting a pitching prospect that could serve at least as like a co-headliner and like a Luis Rob- Robert deal, like a prospect for prospect deal. Maybe it's a three team trade where you're sending a prospect to a team for their pitching prospect, which goes to like Chicago, what have you. I want to see some deals like that next week. So think them on up. Also, at some point next week, probably on Wednesday or Thursday during the all-star break, Ty and I will be doing our uh, trade deadline plan. Uh, mm-hmm. where you guys will get to grade our fan fiction Friday pretty much uh, because yeah. what else are we going to talk about on a Wednesday and Thursday when there's literally no baseball happening? Well, Thursday, I think we're going to have Joe Doyle on the show. Oh, so maybe okay, Wednesday. So probably Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That is going to do it for our show. Before we get out of here, a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidane Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Tidane Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.